Monday morning service call for a leaking water feeder and the service of a GV90 Plus Wild McLean. Just got done explaining to Ian in the best way that I possibly could how primary secondary piping and injection mixing for radiant works. You did a good job. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I just learned about it myself about a month ago. So I'm not an expert, but uh, it's pretty simple in the way that it works. And I kind of told that to him so that he knows. The only well, two I'm systems. Way ahead now. You're way ahead of me. Yeah, because you learned a month ago. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, right. The only two systems I know of that have injection mixing in our area are my grandfather's, which is this one, and my uncle's, which is the other one. I don't know of any other ones around here. I've never, ever seen it before. Um, these are the only two systems that I know of that have injection mixing for the radiant loops. Basically, it just uh, negates the need for mixing valves. So it's pretty. The uh, sensors basically detect the supply and return temp and see how quickly or slowly the temperature rise is coming back to the secondary loop and then it'll mix in more or less 180 degree water from the primary loop to get the temperature up or down. We're gonna change the boiler drain on this because it's leaking. Gonna have to let some air in here, I think. Yeah, Once I, I kick the feeder off, then it'll drain better. So we'll do that well, all on thread. Can I open then. the feeder then? It's open, but just unthread it. It's probably okay. partially blocked. Ian's getting ready to change a three-quarter boiler drain on the bottom of the boiler. And it's not doing too well. He's going to quickly find out how much of a pain in the ass that is yeah. to get off of here. Yes, he's fun. <laughs> all right, we just got done changing the feeder. We took the, I don't know what brand the old one was, but we put a Watts. TB1156 on there. Got it all tightened up nice. Our joints looking beautiful as normal. And we put a new EX30 expansion tank on there. We check every expansion tank every time we service the boiler. You can tell briefly just by knocking, but it's not the most scientific test. If it's got a nice tinny hollow sound, generally the tank is good. And if it's got a thumping kind of a dead sound, then generally it's bad. But I never go just based off of that. I always check the charge in the tank. And the best way to do that, or the only way to do that, I should say, is by draining the boiler. So if you don't want to drain the whole boiler, what you can do is what we do. We put a isolation valve with a drain on there, which allows us to isolate the tank, put a hose up on the hose port, and open this. And that'll basically purge the tank. And then we can check the charge from the bottom. If you check the tank with the system still, basically with the, with the tank still uh, part of the system, you'll just check, check whatever pressure is in the system. So if it's 12 PSI, you're going to check the tank. It's going to say 12 PSI, even though the pre-charge might be zero. So we did that. The tank was totally shot. The bladder was completely full of water. So we changed the tank out and installed the ISO valve to make service in the future a lot easier. I had one or two guys in the comments say that we shouldn't put that valve on there. And if we do put the valve on there, we should remove the handle because someone may come down and fidget with it and basically cause the boiler to overpressurize and have the relief valve drip. And while that's true, with that sort of mentality, there should be no valves on the boiler or the heating system whatsoever because anybody could come down and close any of these valves and cause a pump to deadhead, cause the heat to be non-existent in a certain zone. And if that's the case, you shouldn't have emergency switches on the top of the stairs because someone can hit that inadvertently and cause the boiler to shut off completely. So that logic doesn't make any sense to me. I'm a fan of valves and switches everywhere because it makes my job easier and it makes the customer have to pay less because service takes All less right, time. The final commissioning of our Navian NHB 80 space heating boiler. We converted this from natural gas, which they come set to from the factory over to LP. And you do that with the conversion kit they give you in the box. And then we are doing the very important step of setting dip switches, doing a combustion analysis, looking at our CO2 numbers at low fire and high fire. Our values have to be within half a percent of what they are listed at in the manual. So in this case, our CO2, which is right there on our CAT45 combustion analyzer, we're between 10.4 and 10.5. And we have to be within half a percent of 10.8, which would be 10.25 on the low side. So we are right within spec there. So we're gonna bump this up to high fire, see what our numbers are there. All right, we now have the boiler running at max or high fire. And the spec for high fire CO2 is 10.2%, and we're at 10.3, and the same half a percent variance on either side 
applies to that. So with that being said, we are good to go. We don't have use of the zone valves now, so we're opening them manually and we have warm water flowing through. Um, I have the TNT jumped out with a magnetic jumper wire and all our zones are purged and ideally they'll start coming back warm soon, but it's probably gonna take a while. So we're gonna babysit it for a bit and see what happens. <laughs> 